Hi, I will show you the layer stack manager with which we set the uh, layers of the PCB. We set the thickness, the material, the number of the layers, we set the wire types, we define the width of the tracks according to the desired impedance. And all that uh, is sent to manufacturer to be able to define or to produce the PCB according to your requirements. All right, here is the PCB. And now I will go to the layer stack manager. In the layer stack manager, we see some layers already defined, like uh, the core, the dielectric, the top and bottom copper layer, the top solder mask and bottom solder mask, and of course the top and bottom overlay, which are the names printed on top and bottom of your PCB. So what do we have here? We have an option of defining the thickness of the layers and here the thicknesses are uh, defined in inches. We can set the uh, micrometers by Ctrl Q, again Ctrl Q millimeters, Ctrl Q mils, and then we can cycle through these settings. And uh, usually I like millimeters the most. We can set the different width. Let's say for the dielectric core, we would usually go to 1.6 millimeters or similar, 1.5, 1.55. The top and bottom copper layer are uh, 35 microns, which is okay, and top and bottom solder mask. <clears throat> we can now add some layers. For example, top and bottom surface finish. We click on the copper layer here. We click on the right hand mouse button and insert layer above. And here I can choose surface finish. And in the surface finish, I can set the material. For example, clicking here would give me an option of selecting materials for surface finish, such as HASL with lead free solder, for example. I can also choose ENIC, which is a nickel gold plating or gold or organic solder preservative and so on. Okay, let me go for lead free HASL. Right. Okay, I can also add some extra copper layers. Here, for example, I can insert layer below and I can choose signal or plane. What does that mean? If I choose signal, this layer would be, um, would allow me to, uh, to add anything to it. I can add tracks, planes, whatever. If I select plane, then this layer would be dedicated to copper planes only. So no tracks, nothing, just a plain surface of copper. Okay, <clears throat> maybe the thickness of these planes in the intermediate layer could be smaller, smaller like 17 microns or similar. <clears throat> and I can rename the layer. I can set the name, let's say ground, that would be ground plane. And here I can select the name to be power plane. All right. Now I selected, I added two additional layers, and as you see also two additional prepregs are added. I can set the thickness of these prepregs. Okay, maybe this one would be 1.2 millimeters. That one would be maybe um, 0 0.2, and that also 0 0.2, something like that. Okay, of course we have to uh, consult a manufacturer to give us exact layer thicknesses and also other layer properties such as the dielectric constant or permittivity which is in this column here the dk or df which would be the um, loss factor all right both these two properties of course are also given by the manufacturer now what else i set up the layers um and that's most it. Let's say I wanted to make a four layer PCB. What else? Well, I can set the wire types. Here I have offered only a through hole wires, but I can add another wire type such as blind wires. And here in this properties tab, I can also select that this is a micro wire. And mirror means that I have also micro wires on bottom. Okay, maybe some other wire types as well. I can actually select from which to which layer I require a wire. Let's say between ground and power layer, that would be a buried wire. And it's, all, all, it's uh, already selected to be buried here. The name is changed accordingly. 
maybe I can add a wire between top layer and the third layer here, which would be a strange wire, I must say. And that would be really, really expensive to make. So maybe I wouldn't, I would just like to delete it. And also these buried wires, I would really not recommend them, uh, especially in a four layer PCB, of course. So let us go to through whole wires and micro wires here. Okay, what else? Well, I can set the impedance. What does it mean? Every track, if it has a defined geometry and the surroundings, electrical properties or surroundings, then this track has a certain impedance, which is defined by its geometry and the material properties. Uh, the geometry would be the thickness of the copper, the width of the wire or the track, and the thickness to the next layer of the dielectric, the permittivity of the surroundings materials, and all that is defined in a certain formulas. And if I want a certain Im track impedance, then I can click here. Uh, certain track impedances are required for antennas, for high-speed communication lines, and there are different standards that are um, defining different impedances. For example, the USB uh, is a differential line with 90 ohm of impedance, maybe uh, HDMI would have 100 ohms or the Ethernet as well, and uh, maybe tracks would have 50 ohm impedances. Nevertheless, uh, when I clicked Add Impedance Profile, I got this S50. What does that mean? It means a single line with 50 ohm impedance. And clicking on the layer here, I can define the track on that layer and of course on that, on bottom as well if I want. Okay, clicking here, let me choose a 50 ohm impedance for some antenna of some kind and I can include what I want to in, um, use in the calculation of the width because the impedance is now defined and the program will calculate the width of the track. So 50 ohms, I will include surface finish in the calculation as well. I will include the solder mask, uh, the electric constant as well, and uh, the edge factor. An edge factor is actually the uh, trapezoidal shape of the uh, track of the uh, of the line uh, because of the etching and uh, if the edge factor is zero then the line is perfectly square if the edge factor is one then the line would be actually uh, the the width of that um, that edge uh, the the edge of the track would be the same as the width of the track itself so the formula is here and of course you can select any edge you want according to the manufacturer's data. And um, here then the width of the track is calculated automatically. Okay, I can add another impedance if I want. And let's say I would add a 90 ohm impedance for differential lines such as uh, USB. And here again, I would click here and this is now the differential track. And there I can again include everything in the calculation, use the edge factor and for 90 ohm it calculates the width here. And I can select freely the distance between the tracks. And maybe I can go let's say to 0.1 millimeter and then the width of the tracks would be calculated accordingly. I can then increase the width between the distance between the tracks and the width is changed. But I can also set the width, so I will set the width number 2 to be 0.1 millimeter, and then I will click here, and now all the rest and the edge factor would be changed again to 1, and all the rest is now changed. So I can define this width here and the trace gap would be changed, or I can, let's say, go again, 0 0.2, 0 0.1 here and clicking there, the width between the, the, the distance between the tracks is changed. So clicking on this FX button would calculate this number according to the rest of the set values. So here I defined now two track impedances, the 50 ohm single and the 90 ohm differential. Now all that is then stored and can be used in the main design. What could be uh, made here in this uh, 
uh, uh, software even further, you can go to Layer Stack Visualizer. This Layer Stack Visualizer will show you 2D or 3D visualization of your, of your Layer Stack. You can have different views, you can show full stack or you can zoom out, but then clicking show full stack will give you back the original uh, zoom. Um, you can see layer names or not. What else? You, you can show real layer heights. Now you actually see what is the layer uh, dimension with respect to the rest of the circuit. You can have a space between the layers and simple conductors and stuff. So that's a visualizer. It's quite nicely made. What else? Well, uh, you can go to material library and in this material library, you can find all the materials that are for the surface finish, for uh, PCB layers, for dielectric materials and so on. All that could, could be edited, uh, changed, saved, loaded for, uh, from the layer material libraries. And uh, what else? Uh, in the presets, you have a lot of presets from 2 to 16 layer PCBs. Um, and um, yeah, it, it could be useful if you want to quickly define such a layer stack and then just change maybe the thicknesses or some other material properties. Uh, we also showed you how to change the measurement units. In these feature tabs, you have some advanced features such as back drills, rigid flex design and printed electronics, which will not look now here, maybe some other time. And uh, now all that is defined, we can go to the main PCB. And now we have a four layer PCB. And um, you have here top, ground, power and bottom layer. And if you use the a plane for the for a certain layer let's say that one you can double click on the layer and you can set to which net it will be connected now i don't have any net defined but otherwise i could uh, use it i can actually import changes and then i will be able to use it okay now i have all the nets and everything defined i can now click on this layer and I can select the ground net for that one and for the power maybe I can select some other um, I'm not sure which one now here maybe VCC okay and um, for the documentation what I can do I can go to the um, fab nodes layer which we defined before for the fabrication nodes and I can place the layer stack table and this layer stack table, what you can see is the shape of the PCB and some properties of the layers with the thicknesses and everything. Well, I can actually change that by maybe show board map. I can this un uncheck it because the board is already here. And uh, I can also show total board thickness here at the end. And I can maybe choose millimeters instead of the imperial units. Okay, now I have the layer stack table. <clears throat> well, here I can also now check out uh, what type of wires I have. So clicking tab here would allow me to, to select a type of wire, let's say through hole wires, and I will place a few tab, and maybe I can now um, select a micro wire. Okay. Okay, microwire has different color as you see. And number four would select different width of the wire, but here I will not change it. So I will go to the microwire three and four. You see now this is the bottom microwire. It has different number of, sorry, different colors of the track of, of, the, of the layers here. You can also see what type of wire we have. <clears throat> All right, then. What I can also uh, put here in the documentation is the layer drill table. A drill table <coughs> is placed on the drill uh, um, table layer, like here, drill drawing uh, layer here. And th that one includes all the information about the drills, uh, so the, the holes. And uh, here are the symbols, here are the number of holes used, and these are the dimensions. I can of course set some properties here, such as maybe the chai um, um, 
have a, only for the bottom, let's say, bottom layer uh, holes or top layer or maybe some only top layer holes between the top layer and ground or the holes between bottom layer and power net. So I can select what type of holes do I define in this drill table. So selecting all layer pairs composite table means that this table would now include all the uh, holes that are drilled in different process steps. And um, yeah, this is more or less it regarding the layer stack manager and the documentation which uh, goes with it. And uh, maybe just the last thing in design rules. If I go now to maybe routing width, I can for a certain net class or nets, I can select the impedance profile, which is defined in the layer stack as well. And that track width would be taken from that impedance profile. The same thing I can do for differential pair routing when I can set the impedance profile from differential lines. And um, this can be then used in your design. If I now change the layer stack, this impedance, prof impedance profile will be changed as well. And that would then um, change the actual rules in your design automatically. So all that was uh, to be uh, shown to help you designing the layer stack to define all the properties of your stack before you actually start designing of your PCB. And this is very important for the manufacturer and all this data, all these parameters, you should of course check with the manufacturer that you set the layer stack according to their um, standard stack sizes, standard materials, and uh, that you can use their properties, these material properties uh, properly in your design.